expecting somebody to run? Let me get it. Yes. Grant Putnam? That's right. My name is Norton Carter. Is there some place we can talk privately? Again? I'll be as brief as possible. Look, I was just on my way to work. This is State Department business. I'm sure you'll understand that it takes precedence. Meaning I don't have a choice. That's right. All right. All right. Come on in. We can talk in the living room. Please. Head this way. Grant, thought you'd left for work already. Uh, Mr. Carter, would you wait in there for me, please? Of course. Is everything all right? It's fine. You go on now. Where's that man? It's just a gentleman I have to speak to. I see you. Come on. You head on your way. Have a great day. All right. You too. Suggested having coffee, Dan. You said you had some good news. What is it? Oh, nothing unexpected, Steve, but gratifying nevertheless. As you know, I've had the uh, Cassidine money invested in various CDs. Yes, that was reflected in the quarterly reports. Well, a substantial number of them have uh, just turned over. I think we ought to uh, reinvest the funds. Let our money earn money until we're actually ready to disperse it. I trust your judgment, Dan, and I'll present it to the board for their approval. Oh, here's uh, Carolyn and Monica. Mo would you mind if they join us? Of course not. Would you join us? <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Both look like you were trying to solve a world problem. <laughs> well, not a problem, Monica. Just Dan's usual good news. And what is your usual good news? <laughs> well, I was, I was telling Steve that while uh, we're waiting for construction on the new buildings to begin, the Cassidine money is working for us. Uh, some of our CDs turned over, and Dan recommends that we reinvest. Well, that sounds sensible. Oh, Dan's more than sensible when it comes to handling the hospital finances. He doesn't let one day go by without the Cassidine donation earning money for us. And considering the size of that donation, it's, it's a mighty big job. Superbly done, I might add. You're here. Yes, you. final plans for his reception at the mayor's residence. The guests, he revealed, will number approximately 40 of his staff and, and board. The event is scheduled to introduce his newly appointed commissioners to the city council. Now that, I would say, is an interesting story. You'd better get moving, Ari. You're going to have a busy day. I... I am. Oh, but... Well, first, I want you to get in touch with whoever you need to and find out what service is going to cater this reception. Come in. Ah, Nick. It's all here, just as you request. Yes, so I see. So, what is it? Just something to ensure that Nick has no problem getting into and out of the reception tomorrow. you're here, I have answered a hundred questions. Isn't there ever going to be an end to this? I've read your file, but some new information has turned up, and we need to question you again. Information about what? I'll get to that. Uh, perhaps you should sit down. This may take some time. I've got to make a phone call first. By all means. Yes, this is Grant Putnam calling. Is Mr. Trollope there by any chance? All right, could I speak to whoever is in charge? Yes, sir, I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to be late for work this morning. I... No, I don't know how late. I... I'll just try to get there as soon as I can. I, I realize that, but this is an emergency. I promise it will not happen again. 
Yes, Mr. Smith, as soon as possible. Thank you. I have a uh, plane to catch back to Washington, so could we get started? Are you the one calling shots? Go ahead. I'd like to hear about Fletcher. According to our reports in Chile, Fletcher was the chief DVX operative. That's what you people tell me. And you naturally had contact with him. You know, I've talked about this before. Humor me, Dr. Putnam. Begin again. Tell me everything you remember about Fletcher. To answer your question, the Cassidyne money is an exception. In what way? Well, simply put, because there's so much of it. There's much too much to simply let it earn a modestly, uh, you know, comparative modest interest at the usual institutions. Well, so what do you do instead of that? Well, we have a diversified investment program. Well, Dan, does that tie up our funds for long periods? I only ask because once the construction starts on the building, we're going to need money to pay for it. Well, I have that in mind, Steve. I'll keep a special reserve in short-term accounts. That way, we'll always have cash readily available. Yeah, but even on this uh, short-term basis, is there interest earned? The bottom line is your money always earns money. But I'm sure you quartermains know that. <laughs> uh, why do you say that? Well, because Edward is one of the most astute investors I've ever known. I'm sure that a day doesn't go by that he doesn't see that the quartermain money is earning a high rate of return. We seldom discuss it. Well, with someone like Edward around, you don't have to. <laughs> Excuse me, I've got an appointment in my office. Oh, I have to get back to mine, sir. So see you two later. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's up? What? Well, you looked like you were thinking. I was thinking because Dan was talking about the money, and I just realized that our CDs, they rolled over just today, and I haven't renewed them. How much money is involved? About a quarter of a million dollars. Ah, uh, and you are just going to reinvest that much money, put it right back into regular old CDs? Well, why not? I mean, it's a pretty good rate, and we can get our hands on it when we want to. Boy, obviously, you didn't pay any attention to what Dan just said right now. What do you mean? Of course I did. I heard exactly what he said. No, you didn't. What he said was, when you're dealing with that much money, you can make a lot more than just a moderate interest. Monica, that sort of thing takes time, and I am a doctor, not an investment counselor. Yes, but we hire investment counselors. It still takes too much time to make the kind of decision that's necessary. No, it doesn't. I'll bet I could come up with one in uh, no time flat. Just watch me. Yes, I, I hope you can help me. This is the mayor's office, is it not? Good, good. I'm calling because I'm a supplier to caterers here in Port Charles. And I need to contact the caterer during the mayor's reception. Yes, 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 that's correct. Well, unfortunately, my secretary is on holiday, and she neglected to tell me which caterer to contact. Acme! Yes, of course, of course. I was almost sure it was Acme. I was just calling to be sure. What? Well, I... I... I, sh I have that number. Well, well, what is it? Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. You've been most helpful. Well done, Artie. Now, I suggest that you get down to Acme and get yourself hired. That may not be as easy. Don't be silly. Nonsense. Just give them a background that they won't be able to resist. With your experience, your knowledge of wines, your ten years in Monte Carlo, you shouldn't have any problem. I'll do my best. Your best has always succeeded so far. Now, let's see what you've accomplished. I have already tried it on, and it fits perfectly. Excellent. I think you should get down to the Acme caterers now, Ari. The sooner you're hired, the better. I'm on my way. Nick, now that you've got the uniform, I want you to take a look at these plans of the mayor's mansion. I want you to know every inch of it. It's absolutely vital that you're able to get into and out of the mansion quickly. Hmm. Then we are in luck, because the circuit breaker box is on the wall just outside of the kitchen. Ah, perfect. That will make it easier to get in and out with speed. Tell me where else. Sir, this has become very repetitive. When I was in custody, I told everything I know about Ralph Fletcher. Not just once, but over and over again. 
We need more. About me? No, about Fletcher. Then this isn't an attack on me. No, I'm simply here to gather all the facts I can about Fletcher. That shouldn't disturb you. Believe me, it doesn't. When you were in direct contact with Fletcher, that was usually at the hotel, right? That's right. Now, did you notice times when he was absent from the hotel, particularly in the evening, uh, for an hour or two? No, no, not that I recall. Times when he'd missed dinner or wasn't in the bar afterwards? I didn't keep a log of his comings and goings. But you were trained to observe such things. I just told you I didn't. All right, let's try this. Did you ever see Fletcher with a tall, dark, thin man? At the hotel? Wherever. A man about 35 years of age, tall, dark, slender, with an erect posture? It doesn't ring a bell. Think carefully. This is most important. No, I don't remember. No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yes, I... I did see that man. With Fletcher? They were talking on the ski slopes. You're certain? I'm sure of it. So to the best of your recollection, Fletcher did have contact with the man I described. Absolutely. It have been very helpful. Is that all? For now, if the State Department needs more, I'll be back in touch with you. Uh, don't see me at the door. Uh, I have a plane to catch to Washington. Oh, and uh, thank you. Anytime. Yes, it's Grant Putnam again. Is Mr. Smith there? All right, all right. Well, when he finishes with the customer, would you just tell him that I am on my way? And what do you mean, don't bother? He's gotten somebody to replace me for the whole day? I see. All right, we'll just, uh, just tell him I'll see him tomorrow. Thank you. having a major problem. Imagine it's earth shaking. What is it? Well, you know, I have a brief vacation coming up. You have mentioned that to me rather often. Yeah. Well, I'm having trouble deciding where to go. And the funny thing about it is that... Is what? It's that I've narrowed it down between one of two places. And one place is New Orleans, where they have some of the best food and restaurants in the entire world. And the other place is the exact opposite. The exact opposite of New Orleans? Yeah, it's one of these Avalon health spots where they don't feed you anything at all. So I'm having trouble deciding. I'm sure you'll work it out. Uh, why don't you try concentrating? I am. Oh, I hadn't noticed. Hi, good looking. How are you? <laughs> Hi, Dean. Anything urgent? No emergencies, but you have a very full day. Normal. Les, what do you think? Huh? About what? Well, there's one of these Avalon health spas in Boca Raton. Now, that's in Florida, right? Mm-hmm. Last time I looked. And then they have another one in uh, White Sulphur Springs. And I can't decide which one I would like better. <sighs> well, whichever one you choose, it is going to cost you a fortune. I hope you realize that. What is going to cost a fortune? I'm thinking of going to one of these health spas, you know, where they starve you to death and you come back looking sensational. Amy, I'd be careful. Sometimes those places can be a little dangerous. Well, some health spas are terrific. Yeah, some are, but some aren't. Some are run by not very reputable people, and if you lose too much weight too fast, you can destroy your entire body chemistry. It's not that big a deal. These Avalon places have to be okay. Some of the most important women in the entire country go to them. The important women in the entire country go where? Well, to these Avalon health spas here. Oh. You know about these places, don't you? What places? The Avalon health spas. There are a bunch of these. Oh, I think they're fabulous. You can... Massages, facials, the whole works. You feel like you're just floating on a cloud. <laughs> That's great. Amy, I am serious. Give it a second thought before you go, especially if they have a crash diet program. 
Yes, and give a second thought to your bank balance. Do you still have a lunch date? Good yeah, looking. I'm starved. Okay. Are you on a diet? Mm -hmm. I'm not on a diet. I'm I'm a diet. A diet. Hi. Audrey, I, I was looking Thank for you. you. So, oh, were you? Uh, Amy's been talking about going to a hill spot. What for? She looks fine to me. I just want to go and get pampered, that's all. Oh, well, uh, I guess that, that explains it. <laughs> Audrey, would you mind pampering me a little by having lunch with me? Oh, I thought you'd never ask. Oh, by the way, have you checked my budget uh, proposals yet? Yes, and I'm going to cut your purse strings, dear. Oh, I was afraid of that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the more I think about it, the more it sounds like a great idea to just take a vacation and go to a health spa. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. When are we going? You're not. It's for women only. Well, I guess they let men in once or twice a year, but basically, just for us girls. Really sounds like a good vacation. <laughs> yes, it does. Can you imagine just having facials, massages, oh, the whole I... works, fashion consultants? Sounds like a cost of fortune. And did you see what it, see what it says right here? No, what? It? It's right there. It says that they're going to be opening up some in Port Charles or one there or something. Yeah. You ch now, listen Take to this. All right. I'm oh. listening. I'm listening. Look what it says right here in the... What is at the bottom? I said, in, in, investment information available upon request. So? So? So this is exactly what we need. What are you talking about? You said that I can't get into the place. You can't. Don't be dopey. This is, this is what we can invest in. We can invest in this spa that is going to be built right here in Port Charles. You said we had the money from the CDs. You want to invest a quarter of a million dollars in a fat farm for women? I want our money to make money, just like Dan Rooney said. And this, believe me, my friend, is the way to do it. Hi. Hi, how are you? You must have got me? No, oh, yes, yes, I would. How about you, Jimmy Lee? No, no, I'm just staying a minute. Thanks, Rose. Hi, Kyle, how are you? Jimmy Lee, how are you? Good to see you again. I hope we didn't keep you waiting. Uh, no, not at all. As a matter of fact, I've been uh, enjoying myself. Mmm, yes, I see. <laughs> Kyle is a brilliant artist, Rose. So I've noticed. You know, you make this place look exciting. Well, I like your choice of words. That's what I was trying to convey. Well, if you like his work on a paper napkin, you ought to see some of his real stuff. <laughs> I'd like that. Well, if you really like it, Rose, it's yours. Ah. Uh... Really? That is so sweet. Thank you. You know what? I'm going to get this frame. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get your coffee. Okay. That was very nice of you. I know Rose is thrilled. Well, I like doing sketches. And I like whatever you do. I mean it. When I think that I can actually purchase your work for the new buildings and condos that we're doing. Oh, I'm thrilled. <laughs> well, good. I've been, I've been roughing out some ideas I'd like to show you. On the big north wall of the office building, I'd like to use a geometric scene. Very strong colors. Oh, yes, that's perfect. Something like a Mondrian. Well, a Mondrian or a Bart van der Leck. Or even Malevich. That's interesting. You should mention him. Do you know his uh, eight red triangles? I know it. I worship it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad. I'm convinced he had his own language of form. Oh, yes, I think so, too. Malevich was, in, was very sure that his pure art, like music, should be appreciated for itself without any reference to the world of appearances. Yeah, which is why he had such an influence on design, even architecture. Uh, look, um, I better get going. Oh, I'm sorry. Kyle and I get oh. talking. We... No, no, I enjoyed it listening to you guys talk. I mean, I really do. I just got to get down to the site. What I wanted to stop by and say is that I'm glad we'll be working together. Well, thank you, Jimmy Lee. That's good to hear. Okay, I'll see you. Bye. Bye-bye. Hi, uh, your wife's over there. I see. Hey. Hello, oh, darling. Darling, I'm so glad you could meet us. I wanted you two to meet. Kyle Davies, this is my husband, Grant. How do you do? Pleasure. It's my pleasure. Celia is a great admirer of your work. I was so surprised when you called me at the office. I wasn't sure at all that you'd be able to get away from work. Excuse me. Thank you, Rose. You're welcome. Thank Did you. they tell you that I got a genuine Kyle, Kyle Davy sketch of this place? <laughs> one of these days, I'll do one in oil, I promise. You promise that? Listen, promise. I've got an idea. Come here, I want to show you something. Excuse, Excuse me. me. Yes. Yes. Just a minute. It's cold. Darling, was everything all right at home when I left? Of course. You mean that man who came to talk to me? Yes, I was worried about that. Well, he's from the State Department. Oh, no. Grant, what now? Celia, it's nothing to worry about. Just forget it. You sure? I am positive. He came to ask me a few questions. He asked them and he left. Anyway, I've, I've had some thoughts on... 
I'm sorry. No. Am I interrupting? No, no, not at all. You were saying? Uh, the office building. I, I notice that it faces west, so it'll get afternoon sun. Uh, on the lobby wall, I'm seeing of a composition perhaps reminiscent of Van Dersburg. Yes, he was a poet as well as a painter. I've been looking at the, uh, at the things he did after he joined forces with Raoul and Bills. Yes, he also joined with that sculptor, too, didn't he? Georges Van Der... Uh, Tongerloo. Tongerloo. Right? Van yes. He was yes. very much a part of the group. So were Van Hoff and Reifold. Ah, yes, and that's when they formed the magazine, isn't it? Right, right. They were, um, they were known as the De Stiel Group. Their influence is still growing. Mm -hmm. Even Mondrian followed Van Der Lecht's example. Yes, and that's when he introduced the simple red, blue, and yellow rectangles into his own work. Exactly, exactly. Then about 1920, Mondrian began to separate the rectangles with his strong black bars. Yes, both horizontal and vertical. Right. Which is the effect I'd like to achieve on that west-facing wall. Now, uh, are you familiar with the works of Baccio at all? No, Mrs. Dodd, I have never even stopped to look at this painting. It's really quite beautiful, isn't it? Well, I, I believe it was a gift to the very first mayor who occupied this house. Oh. From the city council, I understand. <laughs> Mayor's residence, Mrs. Dodd speaking. Oh, hello, Mrs. Spencer. Yes, Miss Hill's right here. I'll put her on. I want you to know how helpful she's been. We have everything ready for the reception. Mm -hmm. Here's Miss Hill. Thank you. Laura, darling, are you having fun? Yes, she was right. There's hardly anything left to do. So you just sit there and enjoy yourself and enjoy representing Luke. Yes, go and get your dress. Believe me, everything here is ready for the reception, so you don't have to worry about it. Okay, just don't rush home. All right. I'll talk with you later. Goodbye. Oh, I'll go see. And no, I'll is. get that, Mrs. Dodd. You go ahead with the flowers. You're doing such a marvelous job. Oh, thank you, dear. Yes. Oh, good afternoon. Hello. I'm from Acme Caterers. Oh, yes. Ah, uh, come in, please. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Ingersoll, he is my employer. I uh, wanted to come down personally, but uh, he's tied up. So here I am. I'm his assistant. Oh, well, uh, is there anything in particular you needed? Well, I would just like to make a final check of the premises. You see, we like to be absolutely sure where everything is before the party begins. Uh, of course. Well, uh, why don't you just look at whatever you need to look at? Thank you. I'll do that. Uh, you know, I think it's going to be an absolute lovely party. I'm just so sorry I'm not going to get to be here for it. Oh, you won't be here, Miss... Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Hill. Tiffany Hill. No, I'm afraid, unfortunately, when the reception is in full swing, I shall be on a plane to New York. I'm an actress, as you probably know. I was sure I had seen you before, yes. Uh, well, how nice. Well, is uh, there any place in particular you'd like to look at first? Well, it is usually wise to begin in the kitchen. Uh, of course. I'll get Mrs. Dodd to show you. Thank you. Mrs. Dodd. Yes? This gentleman here is from Acme Caterers, and he would like to check the kitchen. Of course. Follow me. Mm -hmm. I hope I'm not interrupting you. Oh, not at all. In fact, I'm rather impressed by this. Impressed, Miss Hill? Yes, well, in doing a double check. Yes. That way, I am sure that this party is going to be absolutely perfect. Oh, it will be, I promise. Perfect in every way. Thank you. 